12.4, solving quadratics using completing the square. So the first thing we need to do when we're learning this is do a quick review of perfect trinomials. We touched on perfect trinomials when we were learning factoring. They were one of the two special patterns. We had the difference of perfect squares pattern, where you had something squared minus something else squared, and then you had like a plus b times a minus b. But then we had the perfect trinomials, and perfect trinomials were ones that looked like, okay, we said x squared plus 10x plus 25. And the special thing about a perfect trinomial is that the two factors that you find that multiply to give you 25 and add to give you 10 are identical. So 5 times 5 gives you 25 and 5 plus 5 gives you 10, which means that this right here is a perfect trinomial. And when we factor it, the two factors are the same, x plus 5 times x plus 5. So instead of writing it like this, I said if you want, you can write it like this. And as always, you said, do I have to? And I said, no. But today, we do. Today, our goal is to write them like this. That's what we're going to do. So let's say you had x squared minus 12x plus 36. you'd say, what are the two factors that multiply to give you a positive 36 and add to give you a negative 12? Rebecca? Negative 6. Negative 6. So it would be x minus 6 times x minus 6. So we're going to write it as x minus 6 squared. That's the review piece. That's the piece you already knew how to do. We're just remembering that we need to write it as squared. What's going to happen today is you're going to be given, oops, you're going to be given these two pieces and you need to find this piece. So if I said you had x squared plus 8x and we're going to say plus c. What would C need to equal in order for it to add to give you 8, but the two factors are identical? Well, what two factors that are the same number add to give you 8? 4. Essentially, I'm asking you what's half of 8, right? 4. And 4 times 4 is 16. So C would need to equal 16. And if C equals 16, then our trinomial looks like x squared plus 8x plus 16. And then if I asked you to factor it, that would factor into what? X plus 4 and 4. Read the questions carefully that you're given, if it's on the homework or whatever. Sometimes they'll ask for C. Sometimes they'll ask for the whole trinomial. Sometimes they'll ask for just the part that's squared, just the factored version. So just be sure you read and figure out which part of that they want you to do. Okay. What if it, well, you do this one. X squared minus 20X plus C. itself is going to give me negative 20 and then if I multiply that times itself what do I get so what's half of negative 20 negative, negative 10 and what's negative 10 times itself 100. 100 so C equals 100 
trinomial would say x squared minus 20x. It's always plus 100. Remember, for tr perfect trinomials, it always had to be plus that perfect square on the end. The middle term can be positive or negative. It doesn't matter for the middle term, but the last one, that has to be a plus. And then what does this factor into? X minus 10 squared. Do you have any questions about that part of the skill? How do you feel about that? Okay, I want to show you what it looks like in a textbook so that if you ever see this weird notation, you'll know what it means. What this process is, is they say you take the value of B. So B is your A or your negative 20, whatever that coefficient of the linear term, that's B. And you find half of it. Well, how do you find half of something? By dividing by 2. So you take B and you divide it by 2. And when you multiply it by itself, then you're essentially squaring it. So you take B, you divide it by 2, and you square it. If the number is, I had both of these were very easy because the two numbers I gave you to take half of were what kind of numbers? Even. Even. What if they were odd? Well, then it wouldn't be as easy to take out. So if they're odd, like you have x squared plus 9x plus c, rather than change it into a decimal and then having to use your calculator, I just want you to keep doing it like a fraction. Just like, remember on last night's homework when I said if you're dividing and it doesn't come out to be an integer, leave it as a fraction. Same thing here. So you're going to take the 9 and divide it by 2. That's just 9 over 2. Then you would square it. And when you square it, remember you just square the numerator and square the denominator. So 9 times 9 is... 81, 2 times 2 is 4, that would be your value of C. I'm not going to give you a whole lot with odd numbers, but I want you to, to know how to work with them. Just leave them as, leave them as fractions, it's easier. Okay, so why do we need this skill? What we're doing with this skill is we're essentially taking something that's in standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c, and we're changing it into vertex form. Why is vertex form helpful? What does it make it really easy to do? What about the parabola? They're the vertex. Mm -hmm. So the nice thing about vertex form is it shows you the vertex. You don't have to do any crazy math. It just shows you the vertex and it makes it easy to graph, okay? We use this process that we're getting ready to do when we're trying to graph. Now, parabolas, we can graph them in standard form just fine. But if it's a circle, if you want to graph a circle, what point do you have to know? And what's that called? What's the middle of a circle? Technical math term there, the center of the circle. Yeah. You have to know the center of the circle. And the other thing you have to know is the radius of the circle. Once you know those two things, you can graph it. But we are going to use this not just for parabolas, but you'll use it for circles and ellipses and hyperbolas and all these other bizarre conic shapes that you'll graph later, not this year. So that's why we learned this, this interesting process that we're going to do. But, so what we're going to use it for today is solving. That's what we're going to use it for. So we're going to have problems that say solve. And it might look like x 
squared plus 6x plus 7 equals 32. Okay, here's our step. We want to use this completing the square method. The first thing we have to do is this over here is not a perfect trinomial, so we're going to get rid of this guy and put in what we want to make this side a perfect trinomial. So the first thing we'll do is we'll subtract that 7, and then we're going to leave a space for what we want to add. We'll subtract the 7 from both sides. x squared plus 6x equals 25. You see how I just left some space in the middle there? Because now I'm going to do that completing the square. What would C need to be here in order for this left-hand side to be a perfect trinomial? Nine. Nine. Because we take that 6, half of 6 is 3, 3 times 3 is 9, so I, I would, in a separate color, add 9 to both sides of the equation. And once we have that perfect trinomial, then we can factor. We made it a perfect trinomial so that it would factor into something squared, and that something would be x plus equals 34. Does this look familiar, this stage right here? This should look just like what we did for homework last night, right? Once we get to this something squared, we can take the square root of both sides. Remember your plus or minus. Square root of x plus 3 squared is just x plus 3. 34 divided by 2 is 17. So the only factors of 34 are 2 and 17. It doesn't simplify. So we'll just leave it plus or minus the square root of 34. And then what would our last step be? subtract the 3. Can we subtract the 3 from that square root? No. So, uh-huh. Negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 34. There will be some on your homework that then ask you to round your answer to the nearest hundredth. So how do I take this and turn it into answers that I can round to the nearest hundredth? Plug it in plug it into your calculator. So in your calculator you would put negative 3 plus the square root of 34 and that is and 5.83 or 2.83 2.83. What comes after the 3? Perfect. So 2.83 and then we're going to do negative 3 minus the square root of 34. So it just depends on how they want your answer. The top answer works, the left answer works, the right answer, any of those could be given as a, a, an appropriate answer depending on what they're asking you for. Sometimes, you know, you'll be able to take the square root and that'll be a nice number like eight. And then you can just add or subtract from eight, but not simply. So of this, the part that's really new is really just this kind of section right here, right? That part's new, but really from here down is what we did last class. So let's do one more and then I'll give you some time to work. Let's do x squared minus 18x plus 1 
Okay, try this one on your own and see how it goes. All right, so here we have our work. We started by subtracting the one so that our ax squared plus bx were by themselves. Half of 18 is 9, squared is 81, so we added 81 to both sides. Factor the left side to x minus 9 squared. Right side gave us 100, took the square root of both sides. Since the square root of 100 is 10, I went ahead and wrote 10 and negative 10 separately, so that then I could go ahead and write plus 9 and plus 9 for both of them, and I get, we get 19 and negative 1. 